Hello everybody, Ajan here with another Grey Goo replay. Spot on the top left side as the Shroud player, we have Jomi. And spot on the right side, bottom right side, as the Beater player, we have Baby Barn. And nothing too significant. Looks like just a standard build your initial extractors play. And I'm going to fast forward one minute. Looks like we see double refiner two to factory. Usually my play style when I used to play all the time is a bit different. Usually I go for a stealth attachment, then factory, then get the stealth seeker upgrade immediately, build some factories, and then do a bit more of an aggressive base rush through uh, stealth. That's how I usually uh, do my initial opener and just have the initial war factor for building the stealth seekers while the other war factor is building the stalkers or commandos. By the way, we do got extractor coming up here, got extractor here, no extractor here yet. And there's, as you can see, there, this slight variation build will probably net the uh, beta player to do a bit more, uh, be a bit more aggressive. Looks like he's going to do just two stalkers, not an infinite build queue. So perhaps he's going to just get two defensive ones to help scout, maybe to help do some harassment. Looks like he's going to go for extractor. Got this mimic, he starts firing upon it. Let's clean up that stalker. Oh, he, as you can see with that scout, while he may have not have seen inside the opponent's base, well, he did. But with this extractor, it should tell him that he's not going to go super aggressive. He's more just getting defense force out. In theory, anyways. It looks like I got a couple advents, a couple amplifiers for the advents coming out. Perhaps just to defend himself, expecting some sort of aggression by his opponent. And looks like got another factory actually along the way. So it looks like he's doing three fact three factories, three refineries at the moment, but he's not really building anything at the factory. It looks like he's going to get a couple more stalkers out. Not going for an infinite build queue at the moment. He's he was at minus one while that was building, so that is actually a good spot for economy. While of course slightly inefficient, it doesn't mean you're building up economy. You're spending as much as you can get in. Looks like advents are done. Looks like he's going to build a couple more, uh, a couple clashers for either for def probably for defense since he saw these two extractors. In fact, this extra not extractors, uh, stalkers and factories. So it looks like this extractor is being hit. He's going to displace it, move it over here, perhaps over. Nope, here would be a good spot for it, allowing time for him to his uh, clashers come in and defend it. We got a medium hub. That's a bit interesting. Perhaps we're going to see airfield base play. Perhaps get a air tank, no air artillery and a couple hangers. That's just a random guess. But you usually don't see medium hub very often. Perhaps he's wanting to get a get a tank artillery and a couple of large hubs. Or I don't think they actually have a large hub, large hub like that. I think they actually overlap. So perhaps it will tank artillery large, large perhaps. I can't really see at the moment. Most of these clashes are going to come over and engage. A lot of clashes, in fact. So predator production would be pretty good. Just continue with his clash of production. Clashes, of course, do have six damage, no armor penetration, and a good rate of fire. They're also 150 health, so they're quite tanky. We got a bit of our defense force stalkers, but there might be a lot of enough, enough clashes here to overwhelm. Oh, we got more stalkers. Never mind. And plus, a bush advantage will greatly help. You will pick off a couple of these guys before they even get any serious damage up. Three, in fact. Very nice. Looks like you've got three factories, our artillery and our refinery. So it looks like we're going to see... Uh, Hellstrom production. We got a stock over here just to spot anything that's coming up. These stalkers get a nice engagement. We'll quickly take down these clashers. Ooh, doesn't get a nice little pickup right there. And it looks like these extractors are going to come for. He does have the suicide and refinery up the upgrade being researched, but of course that will take some time, another two minutes. So this extractor will probably die. Intel also take a bit of a wrong turn. Looks like the guys are 
Stealthy. <laughs> nice starter step. Just trying to... He does kill... Maybe he actually sold that off. It, I don't think it was health was low enough. So that looks, looks like a sell-off. And that's actually a good idea. If he's going to lose it, just sell it off. Get some uh, economy back from it. Looks like this extractor is going ahead to maybe here or over here. Can't really say. Flashers looks like they're on attack uh, queue move. They're queuing up uh, areas to uh, spot and see if he can't find any extractors of his opponent. Looks like he's actually been harvesting upwards after, in the area he just cleared out. There's a stalker spot of the forest and starts falling back. Got a number of stalkers here. There's more clashes though, so the clashes probably would win out. But we've got some hell shumps now out on the field. And it looks like he's not doing infinite build queue for the hell shumps, just getting a set amount, then going for infinite production of uh, stalkers. His economy is at minus one, that's a very good spot for. And his opponent is actually at plus 32, suggesting he has actually a lot of plus eights. Economy. Actually, he must have two, since plus eights will be three, four plus. That can't be right. That simply cannot be right. I see a bunch of con extractors. None of them look like they're on, uh, wait. That one may be in the plus 8. Yeah, I think that one's actually in the plus 8 region, not the plus 10. So, I don't know. There's a pl I don't know how it gets plus 2. It would be, uh, to make a, a end in a 2 when you're dealing with plus 8, so it would be 6... Uh, six eighths. No, I'm trying to do math. No, it'll be uh, four plus eights. It looks like he's trying to get to shoreable debris, but look, the uh, beta player gets a nice uh, sneak up upon that. We also got a suicide extractor coming in. He does sell that off, doing a mass amount of damage, but it says they. Why well, doesn't suicide extractors have like five hundred damage? I also only actually do 100 because it doesn't seem that I only did uh, 100 damage perfect. So I think this uh, little tooltip may be wrong. It seems like it only explode for 100. The tractor just now went up. And does destroy that one quite nicely, though this force is significantly damaged, perhaps a repair pad. May be warranted. Looks like this uh, economy line will get uh, destroyed. He's going to move over and he will spot this. Not exactly good to lose those. We also got an attack over here. Oh, looks like that some there was extracted there and just got got exploded. Does uh expand down here? It looks like he's going to build a extractor up here. We got some stealth seekers. Uh, we also got Nimbus and Cinderary bombs. Personally, I'm not a fan of this upgrade. I would actually, let's see. Uh, does he have uh Nim any Nimbus yet? He did, currently they do 50 damage, and after the Cinderary bombs, I think they still don't do 50 damage. Just does it over time. I believe it also does a much larger AOE. AOE, AOE radius is 150. Once it's complete, let's compare it between the two. We've got some Hallowers upgrade, and the Hallower AoE and range increase at a decreased rate of fire upgrade has been researched. We also got a uh, Hail Shums can move and shoot. Very nice upgrade. Looks like this Seeker does manage to uh, place itself here, which will give him vision of, of this bush. Looks like there's a bit of a harassment force of Clashers and uh, Hallowers there. Trying to clean up these center fields with a nice, rich 13 catalyst per second. Zero additional catalyst income. Very nice. Very nice usage, which means he will not have any additional economy stored up. Looks like we got a couple of bombers now out. The upgrade is almost finished. Hail Shums are now forced actually can actually see up here thanks to the uh, Seeker and these, these, the Seeker is just giving them vision and of course 
these guys can move and shoot so he can make sure that you never get hit and the secret is spotting for him no nope. keep moving buddy keep moving get the stalkers to play a blocking force because these units are actually quite fast he does lose one hailstroms but now the stalker's not going to engage doing some significant amount of damage he may lose another hailstroms nope he will manage to save it and very nice usage of move and shoot and having a stealth seeker to go in and spot we got harassment force here, but we do got a nice defensive force here. Extractor has been severely damaged. Looks like he's going to uh, suicide it in. Looks like both these guys are going to be suicide in. He's having a few actually uh, stay there and fight while the rest are going to stay back and safe. Be safe. The Seeker's going to come in and spot, going to get in the bush, it's very nice. It'd be, it's great for his Hailstrom base play. And he should now knows there's a lot of fugues. And all these units are quite damaged in fact. So it is a big, because of the, the suicide extractors. A nice little, con nice concave. The beta player is at 50% more population than his opponent. Got more, more Hailstrom shots coming in. And of course, but the Howlers are also applying their very good AoE damage. It looks like the Stalker army is just way too large. Though he is falling back when he actually, in my opinion, does have the advantage. Seeker is in here, so he doesn't need to worry about spotting inside the, inside the bush. We do got a large Klaxon army. Large Klaxon army, while there are, these Stalkers are anti-tank. They only have three armor penetration. The Klaxons have six armor and plus the giant shotguns, and also these units are very damaged. So these Klaxons will rip apart those Hailstroms, no problem. Oh, got a huge bomber line. The AO radius does increase by uh, 50. The damage does not increase, however, but the radius does increase by by uh, radius is increased by 25 by 33 percent actually, because 50. Percent 50 more than 150 is 33 percent more, but of course, the damage is applied over time. And best just only throw in one bombs into a group and run away. The Klaxons do get cleaned up by the by mostly by the Nimbus damage, and these bomber groups are just going to do a significant amount of damage. Overall, this is why I say the Incendiary bombs are not that great because they just walked out. None of them actually died. While if they were regular bombs, they would just all be obliterated. Going in for Seeker, very nice, which will help spot. Uh, Coders will lose their ranged weapons and now become basically a high explosive uh, deaths. Looks like the Nimbus are went back home to rearm. Do got a bunch of uh, Hailstrums still here. A nice move and shoot ability will do a significant amount of damage. The uh, Seeker is still here. There's a problem. The Seeker is not here or here. So you may want to invest in some additional Seekers. If a little pick off would help, but a lot of these units are very damaged. So Halvers and Klaxons both do a good amount of damage. Looks like we do got some uh, AA in the area, but looks like luckily he can burn those guys to death. Don't waste any bombs on that guy. Save your, keep your health shums to do that. Good. Let's see, we do have more and more AA in the area. So he is adapting to his opponent's strategy by building more AA, but his economy is much weaker at the moment with only uh, plus 50. He's lost a lot of harvesters, and there's apparently a uh, stalker group who did a nice good job of harassing his opponent. Now he's going to go straight for the kill. 
Well, part of his force is actually going down south to take out the stock group, which is a bit of a problem for the Shroud player, since he needs more of a military to defend himself. The hill, sh the Nimbus, are apparently back at base, are currently rearming. We got a couple cloud bursts there, but they're not going to do much. This uh, force here is actually doing quite a nice job, nice job of taking out the group that splitting around this direction. But now he's actually going to be have to defending his uh, HQ. These Claxons aren't doing a significant amount of damage, but there's just not enough. Fugues are going in for a nice flank, but Fugues are not exactly frontline units. They do have three armor, but Stalkers have three penetration, so that doesn't really give them any advantage. Most of this force it has been cleaned up. There's quite a number of seekers actually there, or spotted. Now would be a good time, and no need for that. The beat is actually uh, probably one of the least played races. In fact, they're probably, if anything, probably one of the weaker races in the game. Looks like a nice AOE from the uh, AA will help prevent them all from. Laying down the bombs immediately, but they I believe they can still fire so because they still they have zero rounds left, and that is the end of the game. This is Ajion saying thank you for watching, signing off.